In the heart of the atomic age, when the world teetered on the brink of discovery and devastation, are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, a silent protagonist emerged, a core that held the secrets of the universe itself. The demon core isn't a weapon, but it played a crucial role in the development of nuclear science. So let's dive right in and uncover the secrets of this ominous core, a unique and complex nuclear reactor developed in the 1940s. The Demon Core was developed by physicist Louis Slotin in the 1940s at the Los Alamos National Laboratory. It was the first nuclear reactor to use plutonium as a fuel source, and it was the first to use a fast chain reaction. The Demon Core was a sphere of plutonium surrounded by a shell of uranium. The uranium acted as the moderator slowing down the neutrons emitted by the plutonium so they can be absorbed by other plutonium atoms, causing a nuclear chain reaction. The Demon Core was an extremely powerful reactor, capable of producing up to 20 million watts of power. It was used in numerous experiments and was even used to power the world's first atomic bomb. To the news, sir. I'll have a reference to it. What for? Dr. Einstein. Well, there's not much common ground. However, the Demon Core was also extremely dangerous. On August 21st, 1945, physicist Harry Daglane accidentally dropped a tungsten carbide brick onto a supercritical mass of plutonium-239. This caused the mass to go supercritical, releasing a burst of radiation. Dalian received a lethal dose of radiation and died 25 days later. The second accident occurred on May 21, 1946, when physicist Louis Slotin was conducting an experiment with the same supercritical mass of plutonium. He used beryllium hemispheres to manually bring the core close to criticality. Unfortunately, he accidentally allowed the hemispheres to close too much, causing another burst of radiation. Slotin died nine days later from radiation poisoning, after witnessing the destructive power of the atom bomb. As devastating as its effects were, still scientists and politicians did give their heart and soul to develop the man-made disaster. In 1939, the US government initiated the Manhattan Project, which was led by General Leslie Groves with the mission to develop and build the first atomic bomb. This was in response to the fact that Nazi Germany might build their first atomic bomb. The Manhattan Project was a top-secret research and development project during World War II to produce the world's first nuclear weapons. The project was named for the Manhattan Engineer District of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, which was responsible for the project's management. The project was conducted in secret and involved some of the most famous scientists of the time, including Enrico Fermi, J. Robert Oppenheimer, and Edward Teller. The project was based out of Los Alamos, New Mexico, where the scientists worked to develop and test the first atomic bombs. The first atomic bomb was tested in July of 1945 at the Trinity site in Alamogordo, New Mexico. The success of the Manhattan Project had a profound impact on science, politics, and international relations. It marked the beginning of the nuclear age and initiated the Cold War arms race between the United States and the Soviet Union. It also raised ethical and moral questions about the use of atomic weapons. Three days later, the United States dropped a second atomic bomb on Nagasaki, forcing Japan to surrender and effectively ending World War II. The Manhattan Project was an important milestone in world history, ushering in the atomic age and forever changing the face of warfare. On August 6, 1945, the world changed forever. On this day, the United States dropped the first atomic bomb, Little Boy, on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. Three days later, the United States dropped a second atomic bomb, nicknamed Fat Man, on the city of Nagasaki. Little Boy and Fat Man were the first atomic bombs ever used in warfare. They had the power to destroy entire cities, killing hundreds of thousands of people in a matter of seconds. 
The effects of these bombs were devastating. Hundreds of thousands of people were killed instantly, while many more suffered from the long-term effects of radiation. Today, Little Boy and Fat Man are a stark reminder of the destruction that nuclear weapons can cause. In the world of science and innovation, there's one name that stands out, Robert J. Oppenheimer. His story is a fascinating journey through the realms of theoretical physics, wartime secrets, and the complexities of human ambition. Born in 1904, Oppenheimer's early life was marked by a keen intellect and a passion for understanding the universe's inner workings. He delved into the world of theoretical physics, exploring the intricate world of quantum mechanics and cosmology. As the scientific head of the Manhattan Project, he led a team of brilliant minds to develop the first atomic bomb. His leadership and expertise played a pivotal role in shaping the project's success. After the war, Oppenheimer's concerns shifted towards international control of nuclear weapons. Oppenheimer's famous quote, I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, reflected his deep contemplation on the devastating power of the atomic bomb. He advocated for a safer world where the destructive potential of these weapons could be managed on a global scale. Yet the Cold War's political climate took its toll. Accusations of communist sympathies led to the revocation of his security clearance, marking a challenging period in his life and career. Albert Einstein had initially signed the letter to President Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1939, warning him of the potential danger of the atomic bomb. But when asked to help with the Manhattan Project, he agreed, believing it to be a deterrent to Hitler's Germany. However, after the atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Einstein regretted his involvement. He wrote, I made one great mistake in my life when I signed the letter to President Roosevelt recommending that atom bombs be made. Had I known that the Germans would not succeed in producing an atomic bomb, I would never have lifted a finger. Einstein was dismayed at the destruction these weapons had caused and never again lent his name to any other project related to nuclear arms. In the years that followed, Einstein used his fame to promote peace and nuclear disarmament. He famously said, The release of atom power has changed everything except our way of thinking. Einstein's regret of his involvement with the atomic bomb now serves as a reminder of the power of science and a call to action for a more peaceful future. Several other countries started researching and developing the atom bomb to acquire nuclear weapons fast due to the strategic and geopolitical implications of possessing such capabilities. It was time for Russia to reveal the king of bombs, the Tsar Bomba. On October 30, 1961, it was tested over the Novaya Zemlya archipelago in the Arctic Sea. With an estimated yield of around 50 megatons of TNT, it far surpassed any other nuclear weapon in terms of destructive power. To put this into perspective, the combined explosive energy of all bombs used in World War II was only a fraction of the Tsar bomber's power. In 1952, the United Kingdom began its nuclear weapons program. It was during the time of World War II and was created as part of the broader Manhattan program following the successful first nuclear test. A momentous event unfolded on the distant shores of the Pacific Ocean. Codenamed Operation Hurricane, the British nuclear test marked a pivotal juncture in history. Following the path of the USA and the USSR, France also pursued nuclear weapons development. France's nuclear weapons program culminated in its first successful nuclear test in 1960, codenamed Jeboise Bleu. This made France the fourth country to possess nuclear weapons. Other emerging powers like China also started developing their own nuclear technology. It began shortly after the establishment of the People's Republic of China in 1949. Motivated by security concerns and a desire for international prestige, China conducted its first successful nuclear test in 1964, becoming the fifth nuclear-armed nation. In 1974, India conducted its first nuclear test, codenamed as the Smiling Buddha. 
Fast forward to May 11th and 13th in 1998, almost a quarter century later, and India's strategic concerns have evolved and the geopolitical landscape has shifted. Enter Operation Shakti. India, under a new leadership, decides to make a bold move. Not one, not two, but a series of nuclear tests were conducted, sending shockwaves around the globe. Although India initially emphasized the peaceful use of nuclear technology, it conducted a series of nuclear tests in 1998, overtly declaring itself a nuclear weapons state. Following India, Pakistan also did their nuclear test in 1998. With growing political tension between India, Pakistan's nuclear program was initiated in response to perceived security threats from India. Following India's 1998 tests, Pakistan conducted its own nuclear tests in the same year, scoring its status as a nuclear-armed nation. The recent conflict between Ukraine and Russia has again brought tension among government bodies. For this bulletin of the atomic scientists created the doomsday clock, illustrating how close humanity has come to the end of the world. It moved its time in 2023 to 90 seconds to midnight, 10 seconds closer than it has been for the past three years. The doomsday clock serves not only as a warning, but as a catalyst for change. In the end, Oppenheimer's legacy is one of brilliance tempered by moral dilemmas. His story is a reminder that even the most remarkable minds are shaped by the times they live in. Robert J. Oppenheimer's journey through science, war and ethics paints a vivid portrait of a man who played an undeniable role in shaping the course of history. The acquisition of nuclear weapons by various countries has undoubtedly sparked concerns about nuclear proliferation, arms control and regional stability. However, International efforts like the Treaty of the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, or NPT, have played a crucial role in addressing these concerns and promoting a safer world. The NPT, in force since 1970, stands as a testament to the global commitment to preventing the further spread of nuclear weapons while allowing for the responsible and peaceful use of nuclear energy. It formed a foundation for all the world leaders to come together and have diplomatic discussions which might ensure a better, safer future. Thank you for joining us. Your engagement and interest in these critical topics are what drive meaningful discussions and positive change. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content that encourages us to think, learn and grow together. Once again, thank you. Peace.